Well, hello, this is David Birch again, Star Path School of Navigation, carrying on with uh, this will be Storm Avoidance Part 3, and this time we look at the Tropical Storm Claudette in the um, Atlantic Ocean, and we're going to be looking at about this time, 12 o'clock, uh, 12 Zulu on uh, July 14th, the Bastille Day. And here's the storm. Again, this map doesn't tell us a whole lot. Well, it tells us a little something interesting. See, it's an empty circle. The other one we did, or will do, I don't know if we did it already or not, but a solid circle means it's a uh, hurricane, and an open circle means it's a tropical storm. Uh, one thing if, to remember, tropical storm has a unique definition. It's a 34 knots uh, up to 64 or so. In the regular storm, not a tropical storm, but storm force winds are up uh, 40, I don't know what, 40 something, 48, I'd have to look it up. But tropical storm is unique, it's a 34 knots. So here's this uh, storm located here, and then it's moved, but one, here's one thing it tells us. This one is different than the other one. The other one, uh, we just did uh, Guermo, very, it's been, people have been watching it for days. Uh, very well understood. This guy came out of almost nowhere and takes off like a rocket. You could also figure that speed from here. If you put your, look, this is 10 degrees, 10 degrees here. If you put your dividers on here and scale that, you'll see that's about 7 degrees. That's a 420 miles. And this X means where that low is going to be 24 hours later. So that's 420, 420 miles in 24 hours. That's about 8 this thing's going about 18 knots. That's what they, I think, described it as if you read these advisories, about 18 knots. But let's just, and that's what we're going to look at, and we're going to look at being on both sides of it and uh, the nuances of the real world. You're on, you've got your barometer, and you've got your wind, and you've got something that's happening really fast. Uh, and let's look how fast that is with this picture over here. Here's a sort of a history of the reports. On uh, Saturday the 11th, uh, 8 o'clock at night, Saturday 11th, no possible storms in the next five days. Then uh, 2 o'clock, th this is Eastern Daylight Time, but 2 o'clock on Sunday, that's the next day, there's a 20% chance. Then the next, uh, let's see, uh, later the same day, that dropped to 10%, 10% chance. Then on the next day, that's Monday, Monday, 8 a.m. in the morning, it's up to 40%. And then by noon, 12.30, they've all of a sudden got new data and saw the uh, probably the satellite, the ASCAT satellite winds. ASCAT satellite winds shows them that that's real wind and the clouds start going in a circle and they know they got something. So now they're saying uh, in the next 48 hours, 100% chance it's going to be a storm, tropical storm. Then you get your official warning. So the official warning to the world, these are all discussions that you might not have seen actually. But this is the first discussion. It is readily available, and you would have seen. And that actually was announced at 17 Zulu on July 13th. This is now a real tropical storm, and then they've got winds uh, up to uh, 45 knots, 45 knots, and then they give you the paths here. And if you figure that out, that's about 18 knots going up in that direction. So now, now we're going to do the same thing we did with the other storm. Uh, where is our data? Here's our data. And then, but this time, we want to look at, because this thing is moving so fast, we can't do things like 12-hour steps like we did with that hurricane 200 miles away. Now we're still 200 miles away, so we still look at a hypothetical case 200 miles away up here. Get rid of that. 200 miles away, right about here. We got a boat 50, again, same as before, 50 miles off the track on the navigable side and 50 off on the dangerous side. And we're going to look at their data as this system. You see, we can just march that guy right up the road towards them like that and uh, see what winds they would have seen on their boat sitting right here and here. Uh, let's see, back to 12. Okay, so there's where we're starting, and we're going up here. Now, that's, a, and we get the data the same way. You have to go back to video number two, I think, uh, to see the process for how we, how we got that data, just measuring it off these points as the storm marches forward. Now we go back to what the boat might have seen 
uh, in those circumstances, and that's plotted here. Uh, this one's 75. We got two. Actually, we did two in this case. We did two boats, one 50 miles off on either side of the track, and another one 75 miles off. So let's start with a 50, exactly analogous to the uh, Gu Guillermo. And so, but again, now we're, do, we're starting at 12 Zulu, but we're taking data every hour. So now we're going to show the value of having accurate instruments. That means a good barometer, a very good barometer, and uh, well-calibrated wind instruments, and you figure, again, true wind direction, true wind speed. You can't get by with the apparent or the true wind angle, true wind uh, uh, direction, and the pressure. So we're starting out here right at, the, at our 12, uh, at, well, it looks like we're like 12 hours away from when this storm comes by or something like that. We only have 12 hours. And uh, so uh, we got that pressure. And see, the pressure is going down. The pressure is dropping. And on the dangerous side, look, in this case, it's, we see some interesting real-world differences between this one and the other one. Uh, but again, we, there's another analogous thing, I don't want to forget it, um, that you have strong winds on the, on the dangerous side that extend way beyond the system. And that's because these tropical system storms are always moving, almost always, moving up against the edge of a high, which packs up the isobars for a long ways out on the dangerous side. And that we see again here. Okay, but here's that. And here's their wind on the navigable side, just kind of gradually building. Build it up to about 15, though, still navigable, everything navigable. And in this case, the wind on the dangerous side where we were, I mean, where, um, where we had located the boat, it only builds up to about 25, 25 knots here. But we're doing mostly the principle of this, not so much the exact, uh, you know, you could have a storm where this could be going 60 knots. But now, here's where it's a little bit different. Notice on, on, on this side, we're on the navigable side. And when we did Guermo, we saw something interesting. On the, on, on the navigable side there, for just the way the isobars were oriented and how the storm was moving, we didn't see any change for you know, the first few hours we were watching. And then it, really, and then it really started to back sharply here to let us know. Now, on this guy... What happens is on the on the navigable side, it just started down, or started around uh, just uh, right away. Whereas over on the uh, navigable, on the dangerous side, on the dangerous side, it did the wrong thing. You know, if you were just reading a textbook about what do I, how do I judge what's going on from how the wind shifts, this thing didn't was uh, was just backing. Uh, just uh, just like it is on the other side, all the way up till about um, that's like two, four, six, eight hours. For the first eight hours of that approach, that we're we got to be careful about that guideline here. It's not doing it right, and we see that because we can march, we can march through the winds here, and uh, let's see plus. And then you see, here's the wind. Now this is, what do we say? Oh, okay, where were we? Uh, we, we didn't see any, um, any uh, the things start to veer and still around, uh, you know, 20 here. What was the pressure doing here? Pressure was sort of steady, and down here you see, again, pretty steady, and then starting down. So your real first sign, that pressure basically didn't change. And now here it really starts down. So somewhere around uh, hour 15. Hey, are these on the same scale? Why are they not this? I guess they are the same scale. Yeah. Okay. So this pressure didn't change at all here until we get around 16. Around 16. 16 now. Four, well, two, four. Four hours after our first starting paying attention to what's going on. Or if we had just the barometer, just the barometer and the wind, we would, on the dangerous side, just the barometer, we wouldn't uh, see that much. We would just see a little bit here. But sometime around, here's where we start getting a real flag from the barometer. That's a, that's a serious drop there. Uh, now, the dangerous side, we got the wind speed. And the wind speeds here. See the wind speeds starting to pick up. But notice the wind is still backing, backing, which is, as a rule, when you're in fair weather, 
When you're in fair weather, it's always true as a low approaches, the wind's going to back. That's a general rule. It's going to back. Now, what happens is, as this system gets close to you, what happens after some crucial distance to you? Does it keep on backing, or does it start to veer? And that's going to be the flag. But here, you see, we must not gotten into the circular system, and that didn't reach us, a tight little system. Didn't reach us till about two, four, six, six or eight hours afterwards. So if we go up and look at the winds here, let's see, that's 12. Uh, that's uh, 13, 14. We're looking at the winds right here. 13, 14, 15, 16. See, look at that. We're not in. We're still not. Here's the circular. Here's the closed isobars of this system. They're clear down here, you see. They're clear down here. We're up in some random isobar distribution here. These are going to go on around and go around some high out here probably. Okay, 16, uh, 7, 18. There's 18. Now we're starting to get into the system itself. 18, uh, 19, oh, 20, oh, 21, 21. Okay, so now we're definitely, now this wind, this wind here is going to start to veer like it's supposed to according to textbooks. Uh, where is our picture? Oh, here, here, here. So 16 hours in. Well, not quite yet. Looks like it's even further. Goes a little further before we really see a notice, noticeable uh, veering. 16. Oh, no, wait. I'm clear up to 21. 21. Yeah, that's right. Uh, 21, 21. So 21, yeah, okay, so that's right, that's consistent. We're now in the circular isobars, closed isobars, and then it starts, uh, it starts veering like a rocket right here. So that's the, uh, that's, the, that's the thing to keep in mind. This behavior as the system approaches you, the wind direction alone is not enough. You have to keep track of all things involved. Uh, see the wind speed uh, well I don't know you just have to watch everything but now the main thing here is the barometer was an early sign in this case the barometer was our first tool but notice this you need a good barometer you need a good barometer to do this these are just hours apart 12 14 that's six hours and so you, a good barometer is key to detecting these kind of system approaches as early as possible. And here is a perfect place, let me see if I have it, a perfect place to plug a good barometer. That's one we make. And, uh, and well, okay, so it's a good barometer, but, um, and it's described here, it's called the Mintaka Duo. And I want to just show, let me just see if there's not, yes, here, let's see. Here are some, some screens, just off the screen, 30 minutes. But look at this. Here's, a, here's like three hours. Here's a three-hour trace. And you can see here's 18, 19, 20. So that's only two millibars here. You see, you see this huge, you see that drop very nicely. Here's a one, two. You see that? With a, with a good barometer, you can see this stuff dropping very clearly like that over over just a few hours, you see real trends that, that, that matter. So that's, um, that's a way that you spot this sort of thing right in this elbow or no, elbow, knee, <laughs> knee, I guess, whatever, inflection point right here. So that's the, the main thing. That's the main thing I, um, I wanted to show with this, with this system. And to keep in mind, again, the textbook behavior of uh, backing on the navigable side and veering on the uh, dangerous side uh, depends on um, depends on details of the system. And other thing to point out, let's see, one last look at the wind here. No, the wind is to show that, see, I, unfortunately I don't have the map or the rest of the map over here, but there's a high these are packed up against here. And that's why you get, see, this is going away here, kind of like falling off, and this going away. And I think in the other one, we did a, uh, a, a storm avoidance maneuvering, and I think that was shown in the other one. We don't have that. We didn't do that for this one. So that's the, the end of this one. And uh, I think that'll be the end of this here. Oh, no. There, oh, I guess the storm avoidance maneuvering is actually in the next video. I did them out of order, so I've lost track. Next one, we go back to the hurricane Guillermo and do a storm avoidance maneuvering. And that's the end of this one.